Hi, and welcome back. So in this video, I uh, wanted to make a few modifications to our halfway done teacup here, in particular adding on some type of carrying handle um, before I, I 3D print this thing for a display for myself. Um, so that is, that is the plan for today, just fairly straightforward circle path um, extrude and then I do think we'll get into some kind of interesting areas kind of in here where this uh, extrude would would intersect the uh, the model here um, but we'll we'll deal with that once we get to it so I've got the uh, exact same uh, project set up here from uh, video 10 where we where we created this object and if, if you want this file you can uh, get it on the git repo and uh, to start off with I'm going to come over here to part design and then I'm going to create a new body and this body will hold the handle portions of it and I'm going to create a sketch and I'll just pick one of these two planes here and now that I have this sketch, um, I don't know, we'll just, we'll pick the handle coming off of that side um, to make it simple, no particular reason, but I'm gonna come over here and figure out which one of these lines is the construction line on the left side. So it appears to be sketch 007 is what we're looking for. So I'm going to switch over to part design here and I'm going, oops, looks like I need to actually edit my my sketch there. And I'm going to uh, use the sub objects shape binder on this to uh, bring this as a reference over so that I can reference it in sketch 009. And I'm using the green shape binder here for no particular reason. Both of these would work in this particular case since I'm not moving either of these objects. But if you were, um, you'd want to pick the green one for, for things that are uh, moving relative to one another. So going back into the sketch here, I'm going to uh, grab a reference off of these lines here. Oops, it looks like I need to hide sketch 007. It's getting confused with uh, whether I want to click it or the shape binder. There we go, and it looks like that works. And the uh, the reason that I'm grabbing it off of this face as opposed to uh, grabbing, let's say, a shape binder off of the entire thickness here, and I'll, I'll show you this because um, I'm fairly confident that this issue occurs, is that if I, if I grab any of these faces since uh, this is not a standard like free CAD um, model that these are going to come in as B splines and B splines are kind of hard to deal with. Um, so yeah, there there you can see this came in as a, a B spline, so it's you know matches the profile, but it's not uh, it's not super um, user friendly. The B splines aren't. And I believe one of these buttons up here allows you to uh, hide the kind of B spline text, um, but I, I don't uh, I don't recall which button it is exactly. So, anyways, I'm going to uh, get rid of that, and uh, that's the reason I'm not I'm not using the actual shape itself as a reference. And it's also important to note that if I uh, if I come over here, you'll see that this is like kind of randomly placed. Um, it's not attached to either face. So there's no, there's no like great intersection point that you can, uh, you can grab from this thing. So coming back over here to the, uh, to the sketch here, I'm just going to draw myself kind of a, a handle shape, and I'm going to end up doing probably three 
of these curves um, because I think two curves would be kind of kind of difficult to uh, to get into the right shape. And you could use a B spline for this if you really wanted to, but uh, as as I previously said, B splines are kind of a uh, gigantic pain. So we'll take these two and we'll see if we can make them tangent or uh, perpendicular. And it doesn't like that, but that's okay. I can uh, geometrically make them tangent by drawing this line here, making those two tangent and now these are these are always going to be exactly perpendicular to one another. And I'm going to grab this one here and I'm going to just uh, real quickly dimension a vertical dimension here. And for this, I'm thinking probably like five millimeters as the uh, radius for the cup handle. So I want maybe like 5.5 millimeters from from vertical and then you know this cup can be fairly uh fairly wide here i'm just trying to uh maneuver these other points as best i can into a uh, a nice kind of cup shape so we'll see if we can lock that one there um, temporarily. but well, that's kind of funky. It ended up like way down there. Um, but yeah, we'll move them up here and we'll, we'll put you, uh, for instance, coincident with that one while we, while we try to figure out how exactly we want this to uh, happen. So I'm thinking that uh, this is kind of getting into a good shape. Let's give this one a radius so that we can uh, keep that like that. Um, and we'll do, this is maybe a bit a bit large, so maybe we'll do a radius of 10 and we'll see how that looks. And I would like kind of a straight-ish cup. Um, obviously, I might, I might need to move this bottom point here. Um, but I think we could probably get this, like that's looking pretty kind of teacup shaped, you know? So I'm going to, uh, I'll just lock those into position and we'll, we'll see if we like the overall look later. And if we don't, then we can, uh, we can come back and change it. So lock those and should be good there. So I'm going to, uh, exit this sketch and then I need to make myself a, uh, a plane here real fast so that I have something to uh, draw on and we'll see if we can if we can grab a plane that's tangent to the end of one of these things uh, and that looks that looks pretty uh, pretty normal um, so I think I think we'll do that, and we'll do a sketch here, and switch back to a, a regular shape instead of a construction line, and we'll give this a radius of five, as previously described. I think that'll be a uh, an okay radius. Actually, it might be a bit a bit big. We might have to bring this handle out further. Um, so that might be some interesting geometry, but we'll we'll figure that out as we uh, make our way through. So then I'm going to grab uh, these two shapes and do a line. Probably selected them in the wrong direction there. That's why I didn't like it. There we go. And let's bring our teapot back in. See how this is looking. Um, so it's looking, looking okay. It looks like we're fully intersecting on the bottom there. So that should be good. And I'm thinking that this, uh, this handle is approximately the right size, but it needs to, uh, needs to move like this way a bit further and be kind of more straight down here. So, and maybe, maybe it, it, you know, 
comes out and then down and then like over like that, you know, and then I guess it's kind of more boxy shaped. So we'll come back over here to this additive pipe and we'll see if we can, uh, we can edit that. I wasn't too sure of this particular dimension or this particular shape. It's the reason that I, uh, I gave up on it and said we'd come back. Um, so I will, uh, I'll actually cut this so that I can see what I'm doing and we'll get rid of this dimension and let's see, I'll, I'll get rid of that one and this one too. And I'll give myself like a, a line and then a curve and then a line again. And we'll see if that, uh, that type of shape ends up working better. So I'll make these two bits here tangent, and this one's also tangent. And then, of course, obviously, this one's got to intersect back over here. And then I'd like it if this one kind of ends up coming up a little bit. I don't particularly like the kind of looking down uh, angle. Um, let's see. Like this is, this is going to be a kind of odd shaped teacup, I think. Um, maybe this one, maybe this one becomes five and, you know, we end up with a, uh, a more interesting teacup shape. Um, I'll lock that one in position. I, I kind of like that. Uh, and for this one, let's see. I'm not finding any of these that I like too particularly. Um, I guess we'll just, uh, we'll go with kind of this one here. This one seems kind of nice shaped. Okay. So there, uh, that's kind of also funky shaped, but we'll, we'll leave it be for the time being. Um, and it looks like this time we're not fully intersecting. So I'll have to extend that through a bit more. Um, so I'll, I'll do that. And uh, I'm just going to give it a little bit of a, uh, a parallel line here. I guess this would be collinear. And I'll just give this a distance. Um, it's just enough to get it inside. Okay, so now that we have this shape, we've got to uh, figure out how to get rid of these kind of inside bits, because um, obviously that doesn't look super great. So I have a few thoughts on this, and uh, my first thought is that this thickness here, um, if we if we view it, is actually a thickness outwards. You see this make thickness inwards box? So what that means is we had a, a, a shape here. And then what the program, what FreeCAD actually did is instead of, instead of cutting out like a circle on the inside, is it actually just turn this into like a shell and then basically padded the whole thing kind of radially, radially. Um, so the, the actual shape that we modeled ends up kind of subtracted from the middle. So I think that uh, it might be an interesting um, approach to Boolean combine these two things together and then subtract the original base feature from them once again. Um, so I think we'll, we'll try that to, uh, to start out with here. Um, just save in there in case in case it crashes because you know these boolean combinations are pretty um, pretty difficult computationally. Um, just make sure it's intersecting there. I think I think it is. I will I will have to hide the thickness yep. So that that does appear to be intersecting. So we should be good there. Um, actually, I might, I might extend that just a slight bit farther. 
I can actually see into the model here, so that's not going to be super great for our uh, our Boolean combine there. Um, so I will come over here and I'll just grab a, a small line, exactly what I did before. We'll make this uh, like five long here. And then this one and this one can be parallel. All right, and you can see that that is now going through the model. And we can we can deal with kind of getting rid of that slice that's uh, the sliver that's kind of above the rest of it afterwards. Um, I'm I'm not confident that this uh, Boolean combine is going to actually function, but I suppose that we will uh, we will see, won't we? So I grab these two shapes here, and I'll Boolean combine fuse. We'll see if uh, anything good happens there. Does not seem to have happened. So we'll undo that and we'll rebuild them. So let's see if I can uh, Boolean combine with this thickness here. And it's thinking, so maybe that's a good thing. Um, maybe that's not a good thing. Um, I would I would say that it should probably think for some time. This is kind of a uh, an interesting shape. Um, so I, I would expect that it thinks for for a bit, um, but it is possible that this is not going to be great. And let's see here. Looks like it spit out um, something interesting. Um, I was not expecting this. So it's got the base feature and the thickness. And it wants to fuse those two things together, I believe, with our, with our shape. We actually don't want the base feature in here. So I'll remove the base feature and uh, we'll see if that works out for us. See if that helps. Of course, this is all, you know, computationally expensive. So it is not, uh, not something that's going to, uh, be a super fast calculation on the computer side. And let's see, it appears to have gotten rid of the, um, the base, but I in fact still see the base here. So uh, we'll click the OK button and we'll see if it sorts itself out. It might be um, trying to Boolean combine something odd. Um, at which point, I guess we'll we'll try our best to uh, to convince it to do the thing that we actually want. Um, my backup plan is to uh, wrap part design in part um, and use the boolean combine feature from part as opposed to the the boolean feature from part design. And let's see. So it uh, it did something interesting, I guess. It Boolean combined the base feature and uh, and the rest of the part and thickness. Um, once again, we we didn't actually want the base feature. So uh, this. We're going to say no on that because that was trying to, I believe that was trying to delete the actual base feature, which obviously everything here is based on. Um, so let's see if we can get this to, uh, to restart itself. Um, maybe that, that delete was not what I wanted. Maybe I actually want the control Z because my base feature did not end up back with the rest of my part. So let's try, let's try just grabbing the whole body and 
Boolean combining that with our part. Yeah, so it does not seem like that is uh, that is going to work too terribly well. Um, obviously, the thickness did not work before. So let's move over to the uh, the backup plan. So I'll come over to part, and I will grab the thickness down here and the additive pipe, and I want to make union of several shapes. Alrighty, and here we have a fusion. And then to get rid of this, this center section here, I'm actually going to do the exact same thing, but with a cut, and that should get rid of the center section, um, obviously minus the little bit here that's sticking up above the edge of the cup. Um, and I expect that this is a pretty long computation um, since it's, you know, going through and, and comparing all of these surfaces together. And then these surfaces, you know, are not, are not super simple. Um, and looks like we selected them in the wrong order and we actually Boolean combined the other direction. So I want my fusion now and the base feature and I'll cut those two. Okay. And as you can see, um, that did basically exactly what we were looking for. And we still have this kind of little, uh, little bit left over at the top here that we were expecting since this uh, obviously does not intersect with the uh, the boolean combine um, so then i'm just going to grab this uh, this face here and i will make a plane um, if i can find a, a make a plane tool um, Let's switch back over to part design and I will I will make a new part and there we go so we've got this uh, this cup in this new part here and I'm going to grab this top face and make a plane on it and that looks about right okay and then I'm just going to take this plane and I'm just going to extrude cut from it. So that's going to extrude cut the uh, the entire plane. And dimension we'll do through all and we'll see if we need it to be reversed. So yeah, it did, did need to be reversed. I suspect otherwise um, it was failing to start the cut at this point here because this would have been an infinitely thin solid. Um, but there we go. So that is fully combined in no kind of extra geometry and this this extra little bit here I suspect would be completely uh, dissolved if we refined it. Um, obviously we can try that right now and yep there you go they're gone so no longer there anymore. And there we go we've got like a little uh, a little spout, or I guess a little uh, handle on our teacup. So that is the uh, the end of this video. I, I hope you learned something from this, and uh, I hope this is applicable to you in some way. Um, so have a nice day.